Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. On our little post-Christmas podcast, you know. Yeah. Our, our Christmas one was the Jingle All the Way one, but, you know, we gave a post one where we just talked about all things Christmas, past, present, future, so on. Yeah, we're yeah. like the... We, we haven't had like, a Christmas podcast since, I think, like, episode... Since our last 50, Christmas podcast? 49? Yeah, like, long time. I mean... Well, that was... I mean, we've, I guess... Well, how long has it been? Because we had one where it was... I, think I remember because we did Mar- we did one we did Mario Brothers retrospect and we did a Christmas one right after like a bonus one. I th- yes, yeah, so I think Marley's that was like and thirty nine, and that was you got the number right all- down. I, well, because I see the Mario one all the time, so I want to say that one was like thirty eight. And then, because uh, I used to always have that as like it probably still is, I like, probably haven't changed it. Is like the the one it's kind of plays on Potomatic first. Like if you you know here's one to test it out with, but I really haven't changed it in so long. But it's probably still the Mario Brothers. One. We probably haven't listened to that one, but we since we posted it. But it's probably. I wonder if we still sound like. Welcome to Home Man Orange Podcast. Just don't be Mario. Don't be don't be afraid of the mic. Okay, just breathe in, breathe in. <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, uh, uh. you almost you drop your tea almost. No, it got stuck to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> but no. Um, what was I gonna say? Fuck. Uh, I haven't, like, I can't remember. Do we actually have a... Oh, we actually... No, it was with Wes. I guess that was our Christmas special, Wes. That was a Christmas one? Not really. He just happened to be there on Christmas Eve. Westmas. Merry Westmas. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we haven't done a Christmas. Well, you... Christmas once, once, once. You, you feel like, oh, maybe I should do one every single year. And then you go, eh, I probably don't need to do one every year. Maybe every other year or something I'll like that. I'll be honest. I was kind of in the... Even though I didn't really hit me to the last minute, I was a little bit more in the Christmas mood this year, I'll say. I kind like. of snuck up on me, but I kind of did that thing where last minute kind of came up on me, and uh, like, oh yeah, Christmas, it's nice and all, so, so you know. You, usually some years you're just like, oh fuck it, whatever, it's money. <laughs> well, I just went and uh, I, I watched It's a Wonderful Life on Christmas Eve just to get kind of in that spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, good old Jimmy Stewart classic, and I haven't seen that one in quite some time. I mean, it probably had been at least ten years since I last, if not longer, since I last watched it. And then I had this nice colored version that I bought probably fucking three years ago at the pawn shop. And I've been waiting to watch it for a while, and I was like, you know what, this movie, i got to put the colored version in there. And I don't know what it is. Those colored versions, where they take old black and white movies and make them colored again, it's one of the few, it's like almost like one of the mysteries of the world I still don't totally understand. Because I just don't get, it's like, how do they know what colors to make everything? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? It's always one of those ones. It's like, I, I just don't get it. It's just like... It's like, what, G- wait, Jimmy Stewart was actually a black guy? I thought this whole time he was white. <laughs> yeah. Just like, what? I don't get it. It's like, is that really the color of his hair? Like... I think of one, there's like Night of the Living Dead. I got a colored version of that. And I, when I first got it, I was like, I'm buying it anyways. I think I bought it for um, Amoeba Music in San Francisco like seven years ago. And I was like, this could be really dumb. This could be hokey. But I just got to see. And then I watched it, and it made Night of the Living Dead even better. And that's one of my favorite movies of all time. Mm-hmm. Top five favorite horror movies. And just, I don't know what it is. You put it in color. I thought it was going to take away from the horror. I thought it was going to make it look weird. It's going to look, just, the colors weren't going to be right. It's going to throw off a lot of, like, you know, the violence and so on. Mm-hmm. But no. It was great. It was fantastic. But I did do that thing. It's like, look, at he's got a red shirt on. I didn't even know that was red this whole time. I thought it was black. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's what That's I was... That's your whole, like, perspective. But, but I don't know, like, is there, like, somebody comes by just and goes, like, like, yeah, I was there on the scene. I got, like, a photographic memory. Let me tell you what all the colors were really quickly. <laughs> I can see the most getting kind of like, well, I think this would just look better anyway. Yeah, they sense. must just kind of guess. I don't know. That that would be somebody who'd be cool just to talk to and just like explain your process. Just get some color. random just get some random guy like, yeah, I was the key grip. And then by the time they're done, like, I'm lying. I wasn't even fucking there. No, no, no I'm talking about like get the people that, co- that could come by and digitally color those movies later on. Just mm-hmm. like, I want to have somebody sit down and go like, explain it all to me. Explain the magic. Pull back the curtain. This is, this is one of the few things in the world that, you know, they just don't... I've never seen... On any of those DVDs, they never have special features that explain it, and so on. If I had to guess, I mean, keep in mind, this is someone who has very little to no knowledge as far as the technical aspect of this. If I had to guess, they throw some kind of layer, some kind of filter layer over that, to the original film, and they have some kind of program that says, when this color appears, when, when, when we have this shade of gray or this shade of black, this color will appear in that place... And they have other people that kind of go in there and work in the little details. Like keyframe it and, and so key on. And keyframing and like shading. If I had to guess, it was probably something like that. Yeah, but 
I don't know. It's just such a weird one. It's just I, you just think about it because it looks because whenever you watch those movies, it just looks like they're shot in color. Well, wasn't the original like Wizard of Oz actually painted like frame by frame? Like didn't they actually paint that, or was that actually all like in? You know, that, that's, I've always kind of heard that too, and I always just kind of feel like I don't know because I've seen movies that were painted before, and you can mostly always tell that they're painted. Yeah, you're like see splotches. And yeah, because it's not totally perfect. It looks, just looks more artistic than anything else. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's like I just I always just look at those. I just think, huh? It's like. It just fits. Like, the, the movie was shot in color the whole time. Like, it's a wonderful life, too. It's like, the one thing I like about those color ones, too, is it really, like, you see all this stuff that you've never seen the first time you watched it, the second time you watched it, the third time. Because, like, you know, black and white, everything kind of mat meshes together. Yeah. You know, and I don't remember, I love black and white movies, but, you know, just to see this computer-colored version of it, just see kind of, like, it brings this whole new life to it. Whether or not it's kind of like a fake color that you, maybe that's not what it looked like, but it's just interesting. The only one I've seen recently, actually... Two recent ones I've seen. One of them is, uh, one was they're actually both Hitchcock films, The Birds, and then North by Northwest. Huh. I think because yeah, North by Northwest, like mine must just have the colored version this whole time. Then mm -hmm. The Birds, I think, was always colored. Birds is always colored. I thought that was originally black and white. Because every time I've ever watched, it, it's always been colored. And that's like a dumbass. Okay. Well, North by oh, yeah, Northwest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. It's kind of a mistake because a lot of those movies they get confusing because when they released them on VHS back in the day, they were always in the computer colored versions. Mm -hmm. But you just assume that's what it was because you weren't paying attention to the box. You just popped in like, here's a John Wayne movie. Pop it in. Oh, well, that, yeah. I guess it wasn't originally colored. Yeah. I just got North by Northwest a little bit ago. I don't know if I got the color version or not, but you got three bucks for Rasputin's. Can't complain about that. No, that great movie. But mm -hmm. no, I just, I love that thing. But, you know, it's a wonderful life. You know, that movie technically, it's, I think the moral of it's Christmas and it ends on Christmas. But really, you think about like 75% of that movie's not really a Christmas movie. If nobody told you what that movie was and you popped it in, it would be like a twist that it would turn out to be a Christmas movie towards the end. You'd just be like, mm -hmm. I didn't expect that. No, I get what you're saying. Um, I don't know. Since I, since I to was told my whole life it's a Christmas movie. Well, yeah, I think when you're told, but just think if you watched it without that knowledge. Like, just say, like, mm -hmm. hmm, Jimmy Stewart movie. Let me put it in. Because it's live. It starts on Christmas and ends on Christmas. And Does it start on Christmas? I won't, Well, it starts like Christmas Eve or something. Or like, I, well, Maybe not entirely, because he meets his wife. Yeah, none of that stuff's on Christmas, though. Yeah, right, he meets his wife, and they jump... Years later, in 10, like, 10, 15, I guess that's... Well, because, like you know, he's a boy, and then, like, you know, he falls into, like... Or his brother falls into the lake, and he saves his brother, and that's, like, the start of it. Yeah, it's he been a long time since... Loses his thing. hearing. Then he's, then he's like, a little kid running a bar, you know, 1920s. <laughs> Isn't this all in the flashbacks, or is this in the very beginning of the movie? The very beginning of the movie. There's no, like, flashbacks in it. Well, I guess you could say they're flashbacks. When but, Clarence comes. But they don't, they, they don't, like, go back like it's a flashback. It just plays, you know, like... From the start of Jimmy Stewart's life to the end. <laughs> well, I thought Clarence thinks like, come look at this. It's like they're watching a movie of his life, kind of. Thing. Yeah, yeah. But it's not like flashbacks, I guess you could say. Oh, okay, all right. It's more like it progressively goes forward, you know. So then there's a part where he's like, Jimmy Stewart's like working the bar, like it's just like like ten year old boy working the bar, but you like ten year old girls in there, like. <laughs> and then you know he's got like the guy he's working for. What are you doing after this, huh? You yes. know, he's like, his whatever his cousin or like nephew died, so he's back there like drinking and smoking cigars and. Getting all hopped up, and then he accidentally mixes the you know the uh, the poison to of the pills. But Jimmy Stewart's smart enough to know they're like, oh, I don't don't, don't want to poison the kid, you know, Mister, you you put the poison in there. And then he gets like beat, and he's like, no, not my ear, not my ear. <laughs> he's like ten years old. <laughs> Jimmy Stewart just playing a ten year old kid. All right, maybe I haven't seen this whole movie. It's been a while since no, he's not. Movie. Jimmy Stewart's actually not playing the ten year old kid, but. <laughs> They just have him like in a boy school, like a like a schoolboy uniform. They kind of do like old fashioned, like like almost like it's the Hobbit. So they make him look like he's shooting. They shoot, <laughs> they shoot it away. They have like they have like a they have like a they dig a hole for him so he can stand in it. <laughs> <laughs> or he's like standing on his knees or something behind the bar. <laughs> Give him like a schoolboy cap. And, you know, but then it kind of progresses through there, and then you know, yeah, he meets his wife, and he wants to go on travels, and his dad's like, well, maybe you should take over the business. I I I'm guess I'm go I'm going off the part where. I feel like a dumbass now because it I really guess, it doesn't get the it doesn't okay it doesn't get the Christmas till life gets shitty. Well, no, because I remember. He <laughs> I don't get, know if that's like also lady. another like he meets moral his lady and they get they get into like they he gets a, I think he proposes to a, his lady they're they're on their little honeymoon doing like a Hawaiian thing in this tiny little house in the pouring rain pretty much. Yeah, that's where I kind of last time came in. I'm like, oh, this must be the beginning. <laughs> oh no, that's like hour and something into it, if not far. Now I feel like a fucking dumbass. Wow, you've there's been, a whole been, chunk of this movie. I think what this movie you're missing. No wonder you keep thinking it's like a full-on Christmas movie, because yeah, 
It doesn't get to a Christmas movie until like Jimmy Stewart's like, oh no, like my uncle lost all the money because he's a fucking idiot. Yeah, that's where I came in. Like, yeah, it's a Christmas movie. He, he, he gets with his lady. We jump a few years later. He's got a bunch of kids. Yeah. Like, that's right. So, so every time a, a, a bell rings, he gets his fucking wings. Yeah. yeah that's like, like the last like 10 minutes of the movie. I don't know that much, but like last 20 minutes of the movie. Uh, he's cool. like, Daddy, I made a draw. Your draw I fucking saw. Let's get the fuck away from me. Like, your <laughs> uncle's an idiot. He lost $800. Because he, he loses his shit on everybody. $8,000. He loses his shit on everybody all at once because he's great. He's like, oh, it, well, it really becomes like almost like falling down towards the end there. Like, <laughs> he just comes in like he comes in with like a fucking shotgun, like walking down like you know. There's a part where he's already like, "Hello, General Store." Hello, what's the name of the town? Uh, it'd be. Uh... In, 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 in some, the evil, like, Back to the Future, like, world of it, it becomes, like, Potterville, but in the first Potterville. one's called Glensdale, I want to say. Glensdale, like, you're like, hello, Glensdale Theater, has a shotgun, takes out the sign. <laughs> but, hello, well, well, right there. Merry Christmas, Glens <laughs> Glensdale Market, like, takes out, like, the bag boy. Well, like, just, that, <laughs> that movie could have went two places right there when he when everything <laughs> starts to go downhill. <laughs> if Clarence didn't show up and Jimmy Stewart said, maybe I won't kill myself. Maybe I'll kill everybody in this town. <laughs> this godforsaken town that's kept me here. This hellhole of a place. Clarence's like, whoa, whoa, that's not what I was saying. Thank you, Clarence. You opened my eyes. And like, looks up like Clarence that. doesn't get there first and Satan gets there. <laughs> <laughs> and instead of like, he's like, here you go, Jimmy. Or what, 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 we'll just call him Jimmy. Yeah, let's call him Jimmy. I can't remember what his name is. It's, uh, no, it's um, George Bailey. George here Bailey. you go, George. <laughs> Here's an automatic weapon. From the future. <laughs> From the future, nonetheless. <laughs> AK-47. Here's a Home few of them. Friend. Here's some grenades. Here, here's some explosives. Here's some dynamite. Have at this town. This town ruined your life. Remember when you wanted to travel and enjoy the world? Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Perfect. Well, you remember when you wanted to build skyscrapers a bridge? I, I, I do! You remember when your dad told you that you should just stay here and run this company, and then your brother goes off to be the warrior? Yeah, that fuck! <laughs> <laughs> then he punched you in the ear and made you deaf. No, no, that was like the guy he worked for. That guy. You remember that guy you worked for for a bit, and he slapped you around and made your ear bleed. He's like, yeah, well... Yeah, well, he became a nice guy later on. Well, yeah, well, fuck that guy. He slapped you in the ear. What, what kind of fucker does that? Yeah, you're right. Fuck that guy! <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know who you hate the most? Mr. Potter! Goddamn right. <laughs> he walks in like, Merry Christmas, Mr. Mr. Potter. Potter! You cocksucker! <laughs> it's like a <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he comes in, like, he just comes in and very like, George, what happened? Comes back to his family, he's just like, Don't worry, honey. Things are gonna be good from here on in. Like, Daddy! A teacher says every time an angel a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Well, your teacher's fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and here's her head. Because <laughs> there's that part of the movie too where like the teacher calls on the phone and, and like it's just something to do with the kids learning. So I'm just like, well, you, what do you mean? Well, maybe if you're a better teacher, you wouldn't have this problem. And then like the like her husband that. gets on there and stuff. And he's like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? You know my wife? Well, fuck you, sir. <laughs> fuck you, early. <laughs> I for, I remember that part now. It's, and then he goes to the bar, and then he gets beat up. So, so okay, now he's going back to the bar. They're like, we're going to find that teacher's husband. <laughs> Show him who's boss. <laughs> it's a horrible life. <laughs> Until you get a gun. <laughs> Until you get a gun. It's like the tagline. <laughs> Not Clarence, and his name wouldn't be Clarence. No, what if, like, Clarence, like, okay, here's my chance, all of a sudden, like, what if the devil is, comes up, like, snaps his neck? Or not if you do that, no, actually make it even more colder, like, so the devil comes up behind him, puts his mouth over his, like, over, puts put his hand over his mouth, stabs him in the heart, like, shh, 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 it's okay. <laughs> it's okay, you failed. And, like, like I was, I'm on a mission from God. <laughs> My God! And like knifes him again, and just like throws him over, like throws him over into like the into the uh, into the uh, the river, off the bridge into the river. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not gonna go and swim off to that guy. Fuck that. <laughs> oh, geez, that, that guy, that guy looks crazy. <laughs> but yeah, that that movie could that that's one of those movies that could literally could have gone a couple different ways at that point. <laughs> they were at, well, at some point talking about doing like now a uh, a it's a wonderful life too. They were talking about that for a little while, but it was quickly panned. Like some people, because I don't know if the what the copyright to that movie is, but some people. Well, the movie's in the '46, I want to say. Yeah, and they're gonna. There, some people were gonna try and make a, a sequel to it, 
like today, I don't know if they have the rights. Like, yeah, this is what we want to do, and they went over to the the one of the few surviving cast members is the little is the not little anymore, was the little girl that played Susu. The one that was like every time a bell rings. Yeah, yeah, and they went to her saying like, oh yeah, we're gonna make this movie. She's like, oh, that sounds fucking great. I don't know why she talks like Jimmy Stewart. It's <laughs> just the, now now it's like the movie's gonna be called like. <laughs> And yeah. he kind of went from being like a whore. He went, he's not really taken after his his like grandfather, uh, oh, George. Uh, what? George Bailey. I almost went George. The Lassie. movie's. Just I almost went George Lazenby. <laughs> the movie's called like for who the bill will toll. <laughs> <laughs> with a picture of him just holding like fucking like uh, Clarence's head with a machine gun, <laughs> and then there's just this giant bell ring. It just says every time a bell rings, an angel gets shot in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? But they, they didn't really have. She they said like, yeah, we're gonna make a movie about about we're gonna make another sequel. You want to be in it? Like, oh, that'll be great, you know. And then it's like, yeah, this is happening. So for like you know a whole week, it's like, oh yeah, like uh, it's a wonderful life too is gonna happen years later. Like, no, 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 no. These are guys that want to do this, and they just told it to some senile old woman living in a nursing home. Huh. So yeah. That, see, that's one of those. Mo- I'm actually am kind of surprised they haven't remade it just for the fact that. People do all kinds of things well, like this that. This is going to be a sequel, not a remake. Yeah. But I'm, the thing, like, I'm yeah. surprised they haven't remade that movie yet. Now, I know because like, sometimes it's hard to tell like when a movie becomes a, so, so much a classic that you sort of can't remake it. You know, where you know, cause they remake so many things that you go, why the hell did they remake that? And the movie was already so perfect as is. And there's like the television remake to Casablanca. Yeah, there was about. like that in like the 80s, I remember they made. Did it take place in Cuba or something you said? Or? I don't know. It was in Leonard Maltin's book. That's where I read it at. Oh, okay. So I've never seen it. But yeah, what did he give it? Do you like it? No, it was. I, I think I was just looking at the cat. I just want to see what he gave Casablanca. I should probably give it like a four star if I remember correctly. <laughs> but um, and then he said he's like, oh, and you know, there was a sequel to it made for TV in like the eighties, and it doesn't have made for TV movies in there. So oh, okay, <laughs> Leonard, Leonard Maltin doesn't look at made for TV movies. As, <laughs> That's <laughs> beneath him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He, he might give a mention to him, but he'll never review him. That's not worth his time. He's like, like I know. He's like, I know of it, but I acknowledge it. But we know, fuck that movie up its ass. Why? Because it's on the screen. That's why. <laughs> not on my screen. I mean, made for TV is the bastard child of cinema. <laughs> it's the Blair dump. Mom. It's the dumpster baby <laughs> of cinema. <laughs> you don't even see it on the weekends, you know. But I am it's like, kind of get the fuck away from me. Because you, you could just, you know, if all the, the Christmas movies out there, you know, you, you, that is one of those kind of movies that's like, hey, you want to make you want, you want to make a big, huge uh, $200 million this Christmas? Yeah, we'll make It's a Wonderful Life remake. People are going to bitch, but everybody will fucking show up just because they have to see what it is. You know, there's that kind of thing. I'm surprised they just haven't done that. Quick question, and not trying to go off Christmas for a second, but did anybody really go see Annie? Did Annie do good? I don't know. It was put. It was put in the jerk off theater. <laughs> yeah, camp. We went to go see I, I I thought the interview was going to be in the jerk off theater, but apparently the interview outweighed Annie. Yeah, we went to the interview. We I assume just because like Wait, which really that sounds horrible. Like what movie's playing in the jerk off theater? Oh, Annie is. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because it's like a tiny ass little theater. Like I didn't know where they really had these kind of theaters anymore. And I guess it's like where they put their bottom tier movies, or like the ones they know that not bottom tier, but at least the ones they're not sure they're going to see. Which more like not, just the independent ones that, that aren't going to sell nearly as many tickets, but there's still a good enough audience for them. But Andy's in there for some reason. <laughs> well, it just reminds me like most ones like some guy shows up like looking all kind of trench scraggly, coat. trench coat, shady and whatnot. He goes up, he's like, "So what's playing in the jerk off theater? Oh, Andy, what, what's that one about? Well, it's, it's orphanage of a bunch of little girls. Here you go. Here's my money." <laughs> He so goes perfect. in there, he's like, yeah, yeah, he's gonna, he just has his hand on his dick the whole time, like, what are they gonna start making out? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know what he was gonna go see. I always liked it, it's like, yeah, he's kept it, probably like, they're like, sirs, would you please not call it the jerk-off theater? It, it's, it's our little independent theater, not the jerk-off one, just because it's the same size as that one in Taxi Driver, it doesn't make it. I just think of Taxi Driver when I see those kind of theaters, because that's what he goes, takes the girl to see, and it's just like... Well, granted, when we went to go see, uh, we went to go see the interview in the small theater, which could have been uh, like a bigger scale jerk off theater. It could have been that. <laughs> yeah, it could have been it, like it was actually very well maintained, and the floor wasn't sticky with jizz or anything. So <laughs> it was a very nice, well maintained theater. The Angels Camp Theater really takes care of their shit. So yeah, you know, speaking of Taxi Driver, do you think Robert De Niro's character is just kind of like retarded at that part where he goes and like takes it to that theater? Because like, what person in their right mind would say like, "Oh, we're going on a first date. You want to go to the nudie theater?" I think I didn't know what to think. I was actually I, when I watched that, it's just like it's like 
Because, you know, they, they, you know, you suddenly just see those kind of characters in movies where they're just kind of, like, bumbling almost. Yeah. And you're just kind of like... Well, he was he was obviously off. From the first time you see him, you could tell he was off. And that part right Maybe there... Maybe that's what that's supposed to say, is that he's off. I never really thought of him being really that off. I just always just thought of him being kind of, you know, a regular guy. Not highly educated, but not poorly educated. I think because, like, Nam did something to him. I think that's kind of the whole thing. Yeah. And then, like, I think that's the whole thing. They, uh... And then when he, they're sitting in there... Because up until that point, you're just kind of like, oh, good, things are going for him with that girl. And then that's like that's the point where it goes bad. Like, oh, fuck, don't do it, dude. Don't do it. You know, that's like one of those moments you just kind of cringe. Like, oh, that, that's such a hard scene to watch. It makes the girl like, what, I thought you'd like this movie. Like, you didn't get it. He was <laughs> like, like, like just, it's so over his head. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't want to. What? I thought, that, I thought this was what the movies were. Like, There's a preview for what's going to happen later, right? This is, these are the movies my mother used to take me to. <laughs> So like, look, that's me on the sun. That's me on the screen, son. <laughs> Be grateful. This is a free movie ticket you're getting for the year. <laughs> that's how mommy pays the rent. <laughs> <laughs> that's life, right there. You get you get used to it. Mom, can I get some popcorn? No, you can't get no popcorn here. <laughs> you don't want to. You don't. You well, he sounds like Goofy. Oh, I'm little Robert De Niro. <laughs> oh, bother. <laughs> If only I could just get myself a candy bar. That's all the little De Niro wanted. But back to It's a Wonderful Life. Like, you know. I don't know how we're going back to It's a Wonderful Life after that shit. <laughs> now, I'll say this. I would like to see... Now, I know this... People would call this blasphemy. I think Wonderful Life is just like a pure, perfect movie. I love that movie. But I would love to see It's a Wonderful Life if it goes the wrong way. <laughs> I, I would love just to see that. Because, you know, I don't feel like it's disgracing the movie. I think it's just saying, a like, it's, it's a what-if kind of story. It's like Maleficent. It's kind of like yeah. Maleficent. It's just like that. It's exactly like that. It's, it's it doesn't really affect the original. Granted, a lot of people didn't like that, but still, you know, it's a what if. They didn't like the Maleficent. A lot of people didn't like it. Really? I, I, most people I always talked to did like it. I enjoyed it. I, I think it kind of like pulled out at the last minute. I, I thought it was one of. The, I mean, I liked it, but I thought it was one of those things where it was going to be thing. Oh, this she wasn't really bad. She had to put on this facade for whatever reason, or you like you understood why she was bad. Then she had to put on a facade. Then the last. Oh no, she's full on. The good guy, they're changing shit. Oh, whatever. It's still a good movie, but yeah, that, that didn't really bother didn't me. Didn't blow me away. Yeah. Didn't blow me away, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. You probably could have put like an extra half an hour in that movie. I felt like it was just almost a tad bit short. Like, but I mm -hmm. guess they were shooting for that like Disney animated length, but with live action. Yeah, yeah. Because I, 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 there's always that thing that they always say like if a movie's longer than about like 95 minutes, a child won't be able to pay attention because they're fucking retarded. Mm -hmm. Which I, I never. Well, under... Disney's words. <laughs> yeah, literally. Because, I, I can never understand that because I always kind of go like when I was a kid I would sit down and watch like just these long ass movies and like be there like 2001 Space Odyssey and like I'd be paying attention the whole time through. I, I almost paid attention to it better when I was a child than when I'm an adult because now I gotta be in the right state of mind. Yeah. When I was a kid I was just like this is amazing. This is space. Space <laughs> is so cool. <laughs> then again that was probably one of like the three sci-fi movies I saw at that point in time in my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but um the, It's a Wonderful Life though like would you see a remake of that if they did make it, though? It depends on how Or do you think that's blasphemy they... still? Um, well, it depends on how they do it, really. I mean, remakes, I think, are kind of a tricky subject. I mean, my first reaction to a lot of things when I hear a remake is like, oh, come on. But at the same time, there's some people who are never going to see the story just because they can't get past the fact it's black and white, which in some aspect... Well, part they got the colored version, though. One now. part of me thinks kind of like, well, or like just from like old shit. Part yeah, of, yeah. Part, <laughs> part of me thinks, well, fuck those people. The other part of me thinks, though, well, you know what? Um, it... One of my favorite movies is a remake. Departed's a remake. So that's a remake of a of a of, I think of a Chinese crime film. Yeah, but but Departed's based off like actual stuff in the U.S. How is that a remake of a Chinese? Movie? Not they they the, well the concepts. Oh, it's like this the story is, but the character that's fucking weird. Then. Well, Frank Costello was a uh, yeah. mob boss from the fifties. Yeah, that, he was from a long ass time ago. And that so is it just kind of is it just kind of based off multiple things then? A, sort of multiple things. It's not so much based on a true story, but it's like. Because Frank Costello was a mob guy from the 50s, and then, like, an Irish mob guy from the 50s. See, because I always just thought that was sort of, like, that guy's life, just a little bit more modern. And then... With, you know, obviously a Hollywood flair to it. The the, 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 the main thing that it's, it's a remake, that it's sort of a remake of, is the fact it's the story about two um, undercover, like, two, two, sna two, two snitches who mm -hmm. are trying to route the other out first. So you got to snitch with the cops, and you got to snitch within the mob. Yeah, but that, that's kind of that's like an old fashioned style of movie. But that's that's I mean I haven't seen the the original. It's called Internal Affairs, and I don't really know. Maybe they die in the same way, or it has the same kind of beats or whatever. But that's basically what it's supposed to be a remake of. Huh. And they just put that this, sounds like that's more not necessarily a remake, but like a, like sort of an inspired by. 
Maybe that's what it is. I need yeah, to see cause the original. Because, you know, if it's a remake, that's... Uh, it doesn't sound like a remake. I don't, I don't mm. think that's what it is. I could be wrong. Mm. But, um... I don't know. It's like, because, you know, It's a Wonderful Life, that is one of those few movies where you'll meet people that, like, you would never think of them ever watching an old movie. They're like, no, no. I, I love It's a Wonderful Life. Like, th th that movie I watch every year. Like, I've met people that, like, seem like the most, like, bro people, but they, then they, like, get serious for a second. They go, no, 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 Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> well, if you tell them about it... I, I, I have that movie on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray. I love that movie. And digital download. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and they get all, like, serious about it, too. You're like, oh, oh, well. So <laughs> if, you mention, if you mention your satanic version... You're afraid they just like what? <laughs> <laughs> Never! <laughs> you don't do that to the JS. You don't do that to the JS. The JS. Jimmy Stewart. Oh right. Okay. Uh, I didn't know you were that close with him. Yeah. He like rips his shirt open as like a tattoo big of Jimmy, Jimmy Stewart. Stewart. <laughs> like like all like, his movies <laughs> of like like fucking like um like uh, um. Tant Danny Trejo has that woman on his chest or whatever. It's like <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> but um. It's one of those ones, like, I don't think it's necessary, because that movie doesn't, like, even though it takes place back in time, like, that time period still just works for it. It's not like it feels like it's outdated. Because mm -hmm. the, the way that I always feel, like, the two ways that, like, a remake works is when you have, like, a movie that has a good concept, but the movie itself just wasn't that grand, whether it was due to the budget, whether it was due to, you know, something or another. Mm -hmm. Something just didn't, I've, I always use the word Warriors. I know the movie's never been remade, but that's, that always reminds me of, like, the example of it's a movie with a high concept fantastic idea but the movie itself is just not that great mm -hmm. you know so I think that movie if it was remade but still kept in that 70s theme would be amazing no I get you I get you, you know so like those are the kind of movies I think they're great for remakes I think the ones that are kind of like stupid for remakes is movies that are like loose. yeah something like that where it's like why why do you need to remake it I mean I understand like you're making it for a new audience is that's that's what what they're doing is they're saying like teenagers say that Kevin Bacon's old and they don't give a fuck so, <laughs> and they don't know who John Lithgow is. And you're like, they don't know who John Lithgow is. Educate these children. <laughs> they also said, you're an Stretch. idiot for saying that, for knowing who John Lithgow is. I'm like, fuck that guy. Who, who the fuck is saying this? <laughs> but, so like, you know, and that's one of those ones where it's like, okay, I'll say this. Because like with Footloose, I look and go like, why the hell would you remake that? That movie's like a total like classic. But that one, I could sort of get like why. Because they're like, yeah, but that music old and outdated. We, we're trying to sell it to the new kids, you know. It's like... That movie was for kids of the 80s. This movie's going to be for kids of the 2000s. And then you kind of just go, okay, not for me. I get it. You know, that makes sense. You know, whatever. But, uh, okay, I, I can sort of get that one. Not like I'm ever going to go watch it because, once again, that's not dictated towards me. But I, I, I get that one sort of. It's um, it's when they remake just movies that, like, are just fantastic movies. Or they're not even that old. Something like, we can, we can kind of say, like, this goes to one of our old podcasts. The Total Recall one. Yeah. You know, that's one of those movies. And... I'm not saying the Colin Farrell one was bad in any way. Like, I enjoyed it. Not amazing. It's not, mm -hmm. like, legendary. Like, because Total Recall, yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger, that and, and Jurassic Park are my two favorite movies of all time. Even though I like Colin Farrell, it's like you're getting Colin, Colin Farrell of all people to replace like, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. You should have, they should have gone for, maybe they're trying to go for more, like, an everyman thing, but even Colin Farrell is still, like, a good-looking guy who's in decent yeah, shape. He's, he's not everyman. He's, he's not everyman still, but he's not Get Arnold. Steve Buscemi if you want the everyman. Yeah. <laughs> I would see the Steve Buscemi Total Recall movie. Well, what, like, I don't know. What it should, maybe it should have been like The Rock or something. Yeah, The Rock. I, I really do think The Rock is... Oh, he's almost like your ideal like next Arnold. It sounds weird, but he kind of just might... Like, even Arnold himself, in the rundown, you know, he gave him the thumbs up to be in the, almost the next Arnold. He passed the torch to The Rock. So I feel The Rock is pretty much our next Arnold. Because he's big and buff, you know. He was pretty much in sports entertainment beforehand. Just kind of, you know, Arnold was bodybuilding. The Rock was he, wrestling. They were both Hercules. They were both Hercules. You know, and it just seems like The Rock just kind of like, he kind of is like the perfect person to take over uh, Arnold's reign more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. that, that's just kind of how I feel. So, like, that would have been perfect. I think that, that kind of total recall one. But... He, even Arnold Schwarzenegger said this too. He's like, he's like, why, why did they even like go and make a remake of a movie? The movie's barely twenty years old when that came out. He's like, if anything, why don't you just make a sequel? Like, I'll, I'll do a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like, he's like, he's like, that's what the fans want. They don't want some weird kind of remake. They, if they're gonna make something like, you know, I don't. If the movie was forty years old, then I, I can see why. You know, yeah. there's there's a certain level when a movie gets pretty old, I can see why they remake it. Mm -hmm. But it's that weird thing. Once like that was like in the nineties. Like, and I know some people are like, yeah, well, there's many people born, the, you know, in the 90s past Total Recall. We might, who knows, maybe it'll happen after he dies, but at some point, I wonder if somebody's going to come up to Kevin Smith and say, we want to remake Clerks. Yeah. I, I, I could see that maybe. We want to remake, we want to remake your whole slew of films and get some, 
young hot talent for Jay and Silent Bob or whatever. Well, you, the, the weird thing about Clerks is Clerks does have that kind of story that okay, let's say it's let's say okay, it's, we're at twenty years of Clerks. Let's say we're at thirty or forty years of Clerks. I could see that one being kind of like because that story, just the core concept of that story, is relatable to pretty much everybody. That it still holds up so well, even though it's a nineties movie and it's very nineties. It still is just as relatable to this day and age. You still get all the characters. You get that work style of life of just working these convenience stores slash video store where you're just kind of hanging out doing nothing and having to deal with all these shitty people all day long. Here's something... So I, I could see where somebody would go like, I'm going to make, you know, a remake or something like that where it's just people in 2035. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a sci-fi movie, but... <laughs> But you know it's 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 there the call, and now the call is like a little hologram thing like Dante you gotta come into work I'll teleport there later it's my day they off <laughs> why don't you just teleport over why don't you just teleport over to the hockey game no because I gotta fucking work here I gotta too. watch the store I gotta watch the robot store the robot the, the robot clerk is might go on a murder spree again you know I gotta work I've seen on... that Terminator movie from the past yeah. <laughs> But um, so, like so, it's like I I can see where you take like the concept of something and then kind of just like modernize it. But there there is a, there's this weird toss of remakes. You know, it's like I get the concept that a lot of people aren't gonna watch them because they're old. I'm kind of wondering about Clerks right there because what I'm thinking is I'm not I'm almost thinking even though I love that movie, I'm kind of thinking of what would be the point of remaking that to an extent because even though that is a really even though I love that movie, it's one of my favorite movies mm-hmm. right there. It's by this point in time. I'll say this. There are certain people... I'm going to go back backtrack for a minute. Like, Warriors. There are certain people, no matter what you say, they love the Warriors because they grew up with the Warriors. Mm-hmm. At the time, there was nothing like it. So yeah. to, someone like you, to someone like you or me who have seen other things kind of copy the Warriors or build on that foundation and see them do better, cooler things... Yeah. It's kind of like... I mean, like I got respect for the original, but it's kind of hard to enjoy it because you know where it comes from. So it's kind of like, even though I can enjoy or kind of like get some kind of, oh, that's kind of cool when I see like some old Buck Rogers or Flash Gordon stuff, it's like, well, I got Star Wars. Yeah. That, 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 that's cool and it's, I'm glad I saw it and I'm glad it exists, but I got Star Wars and Star Wars is way smoother and way more sleeker and way more cooler. It's the evolution of so it. So yeah. it's kind of like since Clerks, even though I love Clerks and it's still to my this day, one of my favorite movies hasn't mm-hmm. dropped, I'm wondering if like... Because there's so many movies that try to build on Clerks and try and make, you know, the more marketable or more sleeker, more sexier Clerks. And I even though, like, I'm trying to think of one. What's, what's one of those movies where it takes place in a convenience store nowadays, though? Well, I'm not thinking convenience store, but just the idea of a workplace comedy. Oh, yeah, I guess you'd say the workplace comedy. The workplace comedy. And since then, we've had Office Space. We've had, which I love that movie, too. Mm-hmm. We've had, even though this movie's not as good, but there's the... Uh, there's like, Waiting. Yeah, there's wait, well, what going back to the last point, yeah, well, that was what I was gonna say. There's waiting. There's like employee of the month, which is about retail. Is that that's the one with um, Dane, Dane Cook. Cook? Which that one's not that. That one's that, not that, that one. Great. That one was just kind of okay, but but still, but it's, it still kind of falls in that same category of like where it came from of Clerks. And so there, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's more, but you got all these different. I, I pull off like these three. Everyone knows like the 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 Dane Cook one, whatever it is. Yeah, I <laughs> know, <laughs> but um, there is like this. I think for some people it would probably go ha- go hard to go back and watch Clerks. So it'd be kind of like, what's the point? It's so simplified. And I'm sure there's even movies that Clerks probably. You know, I know there's movies Clerks pulled from. But I mean, I don't know of how many movies before that were kind of like workplace comedies. Exactly. Well, yeah, there, maybe there's, there is some, but yeah. You know. There probably is something because you know, mostly is there's, there's always something. And that, there's even television shows about comedy in the workplace. You know what I mean? So, yeah, and, and that's very common for like you know television now too, sitcoms and whatnot. Yeah, but um. Well, I, when, when I say like a re, if they remade Clerks, it sounds like a weird thing, but like think of, but not like they would probably do it script, you know, like don't change the script whatsoever. It would definitely be a modernization of it, you know. What I mean, they would probably modernize the jokes, they modernize the locations. I could see them make it possibly PG thirteen too. Yeah, you, well, then, especially if, if they remade it in like the next like couple of years, since we're kind of on that PG thirteen wave. Yeah. Well, even Kevin Smith's next movie is gonna be PG thirteen. He so he says. It would be yeah. awesome if he says pulls out the last minute. No, I'm making it R. But he wants to make it for his daughter, so he's going to make it PG-13. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, that, that, that's... Because, really, I, I say this. It's like Jurassic Park, one of my favorite movies of all time. That movie's PG-13. A lot of my favorite movies are PG-13. Yeah. It's just the bulk of PG-13. It just seems kind of like 
You want to be R, you just don't got the balls to do it. Part, a lot of times, though, I understand how it is, though. You know, you got to make a sacrifice here and there. But I will say this, though. I look at Jurassic Park, and I just go, you know, if it was rated R, though, it would be that much better. And it's my favorite movie of all time. But if it was rated R, it would just be that much better. Because mm -hmm. the book's rated R. You know what I mean? So it's just like, and I mean, like, it doesn't need to be like, like show me sex scenes and dinosaurs walking each other and shit. Like, not like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Just... Maybe just a little bit more violence, you know, because there's dinosaurs killing people. I mean, come on. Okay. <laughs> you know, maybe have, like, you know, like, I know it's, now it's asking for, like, more things that's there. It's like, don't get me wrong, favorite movie of all time. But, you know, maybe Maldoon goes down and blows away a couple of the velociraptors like he does in the book. You know, and just maybe show it. Maybe less cutaways. Okay. Uh, uh, ultimatum right here. Got an mm -hmm. ultimatum for you. Jurassic Park 4 comes out. That's all we're seeing of this Jurassic Park movies. Next, they're going to reboot it. But rebooting it as straight out of the book. So one book can be like two movies. Yeah. Whatever it is. But, but it's all almost kind of like, I mean, I guess you have to edit, change some stuff for the sake of fitting into a movie. But just whatever, just pretty much all the big stuff in the movie, plus all the violence and swearing. Like Grant is old and grizzled. Like, all, almost like what you're saying is it's going to stay as true to the book as possible. Like don't really even veer away from it. It's almost going to be like, Let's just make it almost like the way Michael Crichton intended the first time around. Yeah, I would see now things like I now I like those kind of concepts. You don't you don't get the da no 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 no. You don't get the no. Theme song. You're not it's getting the other world. It's gonna be the Jurassic Park logo even looks different. Whole other new thing. That's the new Jurassic Park now. What, yeah, we, so it's gonna be new. It's not gonna be like based off. It's not gonna be kind of one of those ones where it's like. Now, this, this is not nearly as good of an example, but at least I like the idea that he at least tried it. The Shining TV miniseries. Kind of like that. Like, it's once once I like the Sh show. That would be a Showtime series. That way you could expand on it, make it longer. Make well, it that's longer. something like... I, I like the idea of that because now we're, we're, now we're getting... It's not just a remake. Because just a generic remake of a movie that's already perfect, I think, is, is kind of just... Why? Yeah. Why? You know? But if you're going to do like something with that where you're going to take, like, okay, well, we're going to take the book... Even though they've kind of like thrown on the, by the, you know, Jurassic Park 3, they kind of use pretty much all the stories from the book just about. But still, there's still still a lot of stuff in there. If they just said like, okay, we're going to make, let's just say the four hour long Jurassic Park movies, or maybe it's, maybe it'll be two parts. And people like the two part things nowadays, or at least movie studios. Though. I'm not too sure if people necessarily like them, but movie studios like them. So you're going to split Jurassic Park 1 into 1 and 2. Maybe, maybe hell, you can even do 1, 2, and 3. Um... And because you could almost combine that, because the weird thing about the Lost World is that book is shorter than the movie, like as far as what really? goes on in it. I mean, there's a lot of talking in it, so that kind of fills up like the book. But the movie is longer as far as like storytelling goes. Well, they don't have like a huge army going after them, right? Isn't the, isn't it? Just it's, kinda... it's like smaller, but the movie or the, or the movie the book ends on the island. It doesn't go into like the San Diego like where the T Rex is running around and stuff like that. But it does have these cool things that's like, they're not in, it sounds weird, they're in the Jurassic Park Lost World video game, but they're not in the movie. There's these like kind of lost raptors that are kind of like chameleons and they're like camouflage. Or mm -hmm. they're, they're dinosaurs, they're not like necessarily lost raptors. It's weird they leave those out. Those, it just those, sounds those so cool. Sell, it's like, yeah. sell toys right there. You yeah, know, like, like, yeah, like, they, you know, it goes against like the fucking wall over there so it blends into like white or brown and stuff like that. I'm like, that's a cool concept. And they're in the Lost World arcade shooter. They want to surprise me if they're probably in the next uh, movie. Well, they might be because the hybrids. You're doing the weird hybrid mix-up shit. But let's just say like you took both books and you put them into three movies. It was just going to be a continuational. And maybe they, maybe they would segue it so it just felt really perfect. Like maybe you'd have even Alan Grant carry on to like the third one or something like like that just to kind of make it as far as a movie fit together but they kept in like every part of like the books you know and really delved into these characters mm -hmm. i guess it probably would maybe work better as a tv show more was, than was, movies, the, was the best like vaughn them. character in the book yeah all those characters are the weird thing in the books though is like they split the characters up differently like there's instead of like just like the girl there's two kids but if you combine those kids personalities together you get like the girl that's ian malcolm's daughter and then, like, some of the other characters, I can't remember their names right now, but you can tell, like, they're, they're almost like, there's this character has half the personality of one of the characters in the movie, and this one has the other half, and then they okay. kind of, like, combine them together. It's kind of weird. They, they really combined everything, sort of. Okay. You know, I'm going to back up. Let, let's, let's just not even use The Lost World for the moment. Let's just stick to just Jurassic Park. And just let's say it's two movies. It's right. two movies. We get every single scene in that book into the movies. And we still keep it, and we almost just, like, we use all the artwork that was in, like, if you buy that original book, they got all this kind of, like, hand-drawn artwork of just kind of, like, what's supposed to look like, what the trucks look like, because they're Toyotas Before in there. Before the movie? 
Yeah, before the movie. They actually came out with a, with a, a book. That's always kind of cool. No, 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 right? no. If you buy like the first edition copy of Jurassic Park, like in '89, uh-huh. it's got like an. I didn't know it was that old. '89. Yeah, it, 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 it makes sense though. The movie's '93, so the I movie's, guess it's good movie's gonna take two to three years to make. I guess I didn't think about that. I guess it makes sense. Okay. So um. So, okay, inside they have all these really sweet drawings, you know, and like in the book, you know, it's a Toyota Land Cruiser is what they have instead. So let's just say they make it every single way it is, you know, exactly like that. And, I, and the only thing I don't care is like if they want to modernize it, like say it takes place in 2016, that's fine. Or, you know, 2018, whenever they made this, that, that that's totally fine. But just keep it looking like how it looks in that one. Like, and on the original one, it's kind of got like a white T-Rex instead and like a black background instead of like the red and black Okay. But I think that would be really cool to see. Like, that's a perfect example of a remake that would not be, like, offensive. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. if we just saw a straight-up remake of Jurassic Park where it, it kind of hit the same, same beats again and, you know, it, something that you, you, you've you already seen. and you, It's like the Total Recall movie. You know what I mean? It, it hits the same beats, just not nearly as impressive. Yeah. You know? And I don't know if I'm wrong. Like, I, I enjoyed that remake of the Total Recall. I know a lot of people kind of, like, hated it. I'm, I'm not going to say it was an amazing movie. Two and a half, maybe out of four stars. Yeah. You know, enjoyable. Not like you got to own it. Not like you got to... I still recommend people to see it. It's, you know, it's got some neat action scenes in it and whatnot. But that's, for example, is it just kind of hits the same... You know what's going to happen in the movie. It's not like the movie's going to throw you a curveball or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Where this Jurassic Park one, I mean, obviously, if you read the book, you know what happens. But it would add in all these little scenes and maybe more dialogue between the characters. And you really get this, like drawn out story of the whole world of that I think that'd be sweet yeah yeah I agree with you right there um I think it's uh I like I, I, I'm just a little like surprised right now I didn't know they actually came out with a book showing all the uh all the artwork yeah it's like that's actually Cisco cool. he, he went out and bought like one of the first copy, edition copies because they're really hard to get I, you, I got the first edition copy of The Lost World, and it's got pictures in it like that, too. It's not nearly as like, impressive because it's after the movie. When, but. We, when, we, uh, when we're done here, you have to show me. Just cause I'm curious. Cause I always like that whenever I see like original like artwork before the movie. Because when you see the movie, you got this thing set in the head, mm-hmm. and that almost becomes, this is the official look for everything, because it almost kind of overtakes it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, anything Lord of the Rings, I mean, all the... I mean, Lord of the Rings, there's still a lot of, you know, other books out there. Like, here's what Tolkien envisioned, and that's kind of cool to look at here and there. But the movie stuff almost overtakes it, so it's kind of cool to look, go yeah. back. and because I like that old Tolkien artwork, too, when you start seeing, like, just the way that, like, they drew the characters back then, like, what people imagined and whatnot. And then, like, another thing was, like, I mean, it was kind of bullshit, but a lot of people, for whatever reason, a lot of people told me Star Wars was based on a book. A lot of people said Star Wars was based on a book. And it wasn't, though. No, that's I, that's weird. But it was one of those weird things, like, they thought the movie was going to come out way sooner. Uh-huh. So the novelization got released, like, almost about a year before the movie came out. Huh. Well, that's different. That, that's just a novel. So maybe that's, where, maybe that's where people got that from. Yeah. So for a long time, I was... So they got confused. <laughs> so it's almost kind of looking at, like, I guess Star Wars... I guess it was almost kind of like... I was looking for that and almost being like, where's the original art, where's the original artwork for that and all that? I, mean, I guess the closest thing you're going to get is concept art. But it's kind of cool when just look at the old concept art for old movies like that. You know? yeah. yeah. And as I said, I, I don't have that Jurassic Park one. You have to go to look at that. But I do have the Lost World one. It's not nearly as impressive as the Jurassic Park one, but it's still cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know. Going back to Christmas for a second, since we're on the topic of like mm-hmm. epic movies and remakes and all that. Epic remake it's- Christmas. There's all this. I mean, we were we were talking about Christmas. <laughs> How about Jimmy Stewart and, and with his AK-47 for the future? <laughs> it's gonna be a merry Christmas after all. <laughs> it's gonna be more holy than it is holly. <laughs> really though, I, I almost feel like if, if going back to It's a Wonderful Life. If they got rid of Mister, if somebody just went in there and just blasted away Potter, I don't think the ta- I think the town would be all fucking grateful because Mister Potter is literally he is. He is like the embodiment of like what happens when capitalism, capitalism and commercialism come into your town and they literally outbuy it. When you look at small towns nowadays and you don't see Wally's like hardware store and Frank's, you know, grocery mart and whatnot, and you just see a Walmart and a Safeway and a GameStop, that's Mr. Potter right there. That is who Mr. Potter is. He embodies so Mr. that. Mr. Potter is running this town. He is. Mr. Potter is. He runs all your towns in America. <laughs> And you know what? If we let Jimmy Stewart have that AK-47 from the future, we might have ended Mr. Potter's reign. <laughs> we need to keep that in mind. So, so we just need to let Satan do his dirty work and just let him influence George. <laughs> I guess Satan's protecting us from capitalism. Yeah. <laughs> and commercialism. We just need to know where to draw the line. 
Let's All right, see. thanks, Lou. Thanks, Lou. But we're, we're gonna stop right here. We're good. Like, no, no, just keep on AK 47s for everybody. No, we're, we we got what we wanted. No, 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 no. That, that that doesn't really work out so well for other countries. But uh, <laughs> so, fuck, they got me again. No, I was thinking though something. What, what if Satan was the guy who invented the AK-47? It wasn't that guy in Russia, and he's, and he's just been handing them out to all these countries throughout time. I'd be a little, I'd be a little like disappointed. It was, I'm like Satan. That's all. You can do AK-47? something better. You can do something better than that. I mean, so like a, so, yeah. it's more than what I got. Yeah, I made the. It's the gun that breaks down the least amount. I mean, they're still using it this day and age. <laughs> People can't see your expression. Them, <laughs> yeah, hands up, up like, <laughs> you know, it's. it's so, my powers aren't nearly as good as what they used to be. Yeah. People don't believe in me as much as they did back in the olden days. You know? If more people believe in me, the more I'm kind of like Freddy Krueger. The more they believe in me and the more they trust in me, the more, you well, know, I, 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 I can make something more. Like, we're in the, this god age now, so no one don't give a fuck. You know? yeah, so, they're just splitting it up. You know, you got these guys believing in Thor, these guys believing in Muhammad, these guys believing in Buddha. Where's, where's, the, this, where's these, the love for Satan? These where's fuckers, the love? <laughs> these fuckers that believe in a spaghetti monster, you know. I'm like, just trying to protect you folks here. <laughs> Satan. <laughs> it's what I do. I just want everybody to have goats and AK-47s. Is that so wrong? I want them to kill the goats with the AK-47s. But first you can ride them because, you know, have you ever rode a goat before? No it's a use. lot of fun. They're stronger than you think. You know, if you just feed them the right kind of hay and keep them well nourished, give them a good, a good ride. You know, they got handlebars too. And I'm not being sexual. I'm being sexual. Yeah, yeah, you know? no, no, I'm, I'm not weird like that. I mean, there's all this goat fucking shit, and then, like, murder. I'm not about that. I just want you to kill the goat. That's all I want you, know, you to do. First, you can ride around like a pet. Yeah, you know? yeah. Oh, why use cars when you have goats? <laughs> you know, I thought Satan would be way more intimidating and way more scary, but he's just... I don't know. He wants to I don't know. Is he nice, or is he just weird and creepy? I'm not too sure. <laughs> he's like your weird... He's like that guy. He's like that creepy neighbor. He's nice, but you don't want to go into his house. <laughs> exactly, because you're afraid of what might be in that house. He's really nice, but he just might, when he gives you some looped in, like, when he gives you some looped in tea, it just might be drugged. You might wake up sodomized. It's hard to say. <laughs> he's, he, he's just there for you like that. But, what I was going to say, though, earlier, was I think it would be kind of, um, well, I'm surprised they haven't remade yet. I mean, they've had, like, multiple, like, TV remakes of it. TV but, remakes don't count, according to Larry Mountain. Yeah, <laughs> we just lost a little moan. You don't listen to the show no more. Oh, they're doing TV remakes. Fuck these guys. Fuck these guys. They're, they're not real true podcasters. True podcasters don't even talk about TV. I really think we had little moan up until that point. Fuck. I, I got. Well, fucked that's it the up. one thing. It's like Larry Moan. He's got like twenty-seven thousand movies in there, but no fucking TV movies whatsoever. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say uh, there was a. I wonder if that's like. I want to go back. I'll get back to the main thing in a second. Do you think that's kind of like the uh, like. There's critics for television, like movies, like no, no, you can't, you can't come into the theater. This is like for big screen people. You're the small screen people. Go back to your. <laughs> what you think, Larry Mullen, like comes out, like he sees like a TV critic come inside, or like a TV, no, no, made for TV movie critic comes in, he just like pushes him over, like no, no. Where you going? Oh, push it! Like I, I just want to go see. I, I just want to go see the interview. I, you can't see. He the just interview. takes his ticket, rips it in half, throws it on the ground. No, you get out of here. You don't belong here. <laughs> Move along now. Move along! This is back in the 90s, like Gene Sisko and Robert Eber, like, hey, hey, you lost? Where are you going? You know, start like shoving this TV critic around. <laughs> Just start like hustling this guy. <laughs> like, oh, I don't want to. No, no, no. You don't belong here. This, this is movie theaters for us sophisticated cinema folks. Go back to watching Friends and Lois and Clark. <laughs> it's in the 90s. You, you don't get your Superman Returns. <laughs> this is the 90s. I'm not trying to tie it into whatever the closest Superman movie was in theaters. <laughs> so, but, I, but anyway, um, I was going to say, I'm surprised because they have a bunch of TV remakes of these, but like, there is like House, like the, the story of Santa Claus. Because there is, is this... Called? Well, no, they're just like, it's literally, it's literally they're just the story of Santa Claus. And it's like his life story. And basically, you know, this, it's like this big, I mean, it always seems kind of small because it's always claymation or always cheap animation. But there, it is, they actually do have a claymation movie of it. It opens up with the death of Santa Claus, of huh. all things. It opens up with... Now, the, what year is this movie? This has to be like an anime movie like in the fucking 60s or something. Now, is this in like the same thing as like the Reindeer and Frosty the Snowman stuff? I don't know if it's the same company, but it's that same type of like claymation. It has that same look to it. Maybe I have seen this. And this basically what, what ends up happening is, uh, I mean, you know, it's like some, it's like probably some German fairy tale kind of thing. 
what ends up happening, it opens up with all like these like creature, like forest. Yeah, creatures. Yeah, like Jim and Creature Forest me, but yeah, you know. <laughs> kind of out meeting like they're all like these gods or whatever saying, yeah, yeah, so uh, Santa Claus is gonna fucking die. Let's reflect back on his life for a minute. And basically, they just kind of go. It's a little, a word a little more poetically than that. But basically, that somehow there's like this infant that's found and raised by this woman. And he had, he like starts bringing toys to children. And he's like raised in this magical forest, magical environment. Starts bringing toys to children down in this town. It's like, no fucking toys here, you know. Like that. Really like love. Exactly. No, not even that. They're no. just like kind of like we hate everything, you know. <laughs> we hate toys. There's, there's we hate children. There is actually the Rudolph the Red Nose. Not the root. It's like not the Rudolph the Red Nose reindeer. Uh, the same guys that made that version. There's a version called like Santa Claus is coming to town. Oh it's yeah. Like, it, it's a little bit of the more lighthearted version. And there, it's just kind of like some fat, angry German dude like no toys in this town. I hate them. You know. I hate the toys. Yeah. So. Basically, you know, like, if you get the toy, we will fucking hang you! You know? So it's almost kind of like... not bring your Wolfenstein in here! <laughs> <laughs> so, I wonder how many Americans have ever been, like, you know, they accidentally had a copy of, like, a couple floppy disks in their backpack that said Wolfenstein on it, and then they get checked at, like, Germany, and then, like, they go, <gasps> The Wolfenstein! <laughs> it says, like, a Chinese... For some reason, the attendant's Chinese. <laughs> the guy is Chinese. Like, I'm trying to make myself Chinese. The Wolfenstein, very bad! Or Chinese or Japanese. <laughs> the Wolfenstein! <laughs> no, they didn't just get locked up. Like, what'd you get locked in prison for? Well, I was locked in a German prison for three years for carrying a couple floppy disks of Wolfenstein. Was that, like, a real thing? You could get locked in prison? For I don't that? think you get locked in prison, but it's illegal to have that game there. Really? Yeah. Jesus. It's like, it never happened! <laughs> well, yeah, literally. Well, they got, like, those... I, I don't know if they, I, I don't think they still have these, but for at least throughout the 90s and early 2000s, they, they had all those weird laws in Germany, like, you know, if you had a violence video game, it could never be towards other humans. You had to be killing aliens, you know, um, zombies, something or another. But then the blood, too, also couldn't be red. It had to be green or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of like, you know, just take all the fun out of it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so it's just like, you know, like, well, I guess Mo Mario's okay, because these goonies stomping on the mushroom people. Uh, those are turtles. Fuck turtles. Bowser is humanoid standing on his hind legs. No! <laughs> well, they probably had. What if the child has a poor sense of humor and willingly makes Mario jump off the cliff? No! No! <laughs> what about Sonic the Hedgehog? Well, Sonic seems fine. He's attacking robots. He's attacking. He's attacking a man! He's attacking a man! This animal is attacking a man! He looks like Teddy Roosevelt! No! We love Teddy Roosevelt! <laughs> <laughs> Why do you guys love Teddy Roosevelt so much? He's, he's a nice guy. He's cool. He's cool. He's got that mustache. He's got the glasses. You know, he seems like a guy. He's, he's the kind of guy to take you hunting, but then buy you a beer after you are done. You know, he show you. Not, not, not make funny business inside your tent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's a good guy. He's, you know, he's a man's man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but Sonic is trying to kill him, so that is mad. <laughs> oh. But where's that lady? Fuck to? Christmas. I don't oh, right, yeah. <laughs> so, there's Christmas these, so there's like this angry German guy, like, I don't like the toys, you know? And then there's like, um, so there's multiple versions, and Santa Claus is like, oh, well, fuck you, I'm bringing the toys anyway, because I'm a good old fashioned guy, you know? And there's, I'm my way. There's fantasy creatures, and there's different versions. There's like some that are very, like, I don't know, it's more the real, I don't know which version came first, but there's ones that are like really, like, grand scale, like, creatures and monsters or someone's like oh, i'm just going to this town to get some toys and at some point some monsters some like ice giants or frost giant like creatures come in you know it's, it's all like from that area huh come in and start attacking stuff and like santa claus has to almost build up an army to fight these things and you know it's a quick little scene you know just like well they clay made it it's like you know like oh like 10 people versus 10 people with swords then no one dies is getting knocked over like oh okay we, we beat them we stopped the abominable snowman people or whatever and then Santa Claus, one version, older version, Santa Claus is just getting older and he's all like, and he dies on his deathbed. He's like, Merry Christmas. And I dies. had a good life. Exactly. And he was Clarence, like, Clarence, Clarence. <laughs> Clarence is like, no one's coming for you, fat boy. <laughs> <laughs> we were just using you the whole time to get some free shit. 
<laughs> he just went, goes up to his ear, like, at the very end, he's like, your life's a lie. Like, right at the very end, like, whispers that. This is last, like, this is look of shock on his face. He's like, no, oh, just dies. No, not Clarence. You're the only one I trusted. <laughs> Merry Christmas, folks. Da, 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 da. Hey! No, so there, there, there's, like, one version where... He just dies right there, like, well, don't worry, people will carry on what he started, and, you know, like, parents, and, you know, whatever. And then there's another one that, uh, at the last minute, the angel of death is going towards him, but someone says, like, no, no, you can't take him, he's too important, people need him, he's, like, you know, a beacon of hope, and this and that, so then it kind of jumps to, like, present day, and he's doing what we know what he does. So, I think he could really make a big, like, do it well, Make like a big grand scale kind of like Middle Earth like Santa Claus movie. Yeah, I know it sounds kind of. I think that sounds kind of cool because you know it's like if you can make, make a PG thirteen. Don't be afraid to make a PG yeah, thirteen. Make, make it like just make it like Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like Nor it's kind of like how like Maleficent did it too. Norwegian kind of like mythology type stuff wrapped around it because I believe that's where it all came from. I believe Norwegian. Uh, I mean, I don't really know a whole lot about I don't Norwegian. Where that coming from uh, Norse? You talking about Norse area? I don't remember. Well, isn't a little bit of Santa Claus from Norse, like Germany? Like, isn't like Nor Norwegian stuff comes into Germany or a little it bit? Did back in the day, but the Santa Claus I don't think does because that would have been a long time ago. It okay. Been like, 2,000 years ago plus for Norris. Mm. Okay, well, I mean, you could work into some, like, German fairy tale stuff, some other, cause I believe that's what it did. I think it pulled from other things and made this one, like, Christmas holiday, Christmas story about it, so. Well, because I know, because a, a lot of times all those, like, things come together from all different parts of Europe and mm -hmm. so on in the and world. there's, like, different versions of this story, you know, so, and he, he kind of starts off, as, it starts off when he's a baby and works all the way to, he's an old man, sometimes he dies at the end, sometimes he... You know, gets blessed with the immortal life the last minute, and you know, so he keeps doing what he's doing. It's one of those like run, little run, like he restarts his day, and like <laughs> different endings happen. <laughs> I'm just imagining though, if he did do it that long, Santa Claus would have to become very jaded after a while, and he would just become like, of all the kids, he he stops by. There's like the last kid he stops at at some orphanage, comes by. He's like, oh, thanks, Santa. He's like, you get up. He's like, well, I just, I had a long ass day. I need to have Your a dad's got beer in the fridge. I know it. <laughs> he sits down. He sits down, like, okay, let me just tell you, man. He has to vent out to this kid. Like, <laughs> he just, he chugs about two beers before he even starts talking. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I got some. You know, man, I, I, there's a time I just loved my fucking job, but. For, you used swear? to be merry. <laughs> used to be holy. Not so much anymore. Now I, I just don't give a fuck, man. I'm, I'm you know, I, I kind of get where that Grinch thing's coming from, you know. Billy, and, uh, Billy, your dad's got some cigars in his in his cabinet over there. I can see him. Get me some. They're Cubans. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah, like, no, I, I, know, I know they're easy to get now, you know, but whatever. It, it, it still holds value to me. Yeah. Certain people like that. Yeah. But do I have to? Like, I just brought you some fucking toys. You better give me those fucking Cubans. I just got you an Xbox One and PS4 and a Wii U. Be fucking grateful. Yeah. I, and I made it myself, too. I'm like, I did, I did, none of that, like, outsourced elf work there. I did it. <laughs> Straight from the heartland. He goes and grabs them. He says, actually, lie. I actually just got you a Game Boy 1. Anyway. <laughs> I got you, like, a, one of those old DSs. It was used at GameStop. I didn't want to pay a whole lot. <laughs> He's going on. He just starts like ranting and like venting about his job, about because he has he he can't do it at work. So he has to go home. He's like, ho ho, hello everybody. We gotta just we gotta make our quota. Let's get this going. Plus, you know, he has to put a sign up that says like no alcohol in the workroom and all this stuff. Because, so this because those the L's like they used to kind of like drink freely, but then shit went down and. You know, presents got made wrong. Barbie's head was on top of G.I. Joe, and sometimes G.I. Joe came with no clothes. <laughs> Someone there, there got... Was, there was probably, you know, he's like, alcohol used to work well, and, you know. There is those, there's those, like, uh, there's, like, that a toy where it's basically just the rings on the little, like, platform. Oh, yeah. It's just a fucking dildo. <laughs> <laughs> the rings. It's like, yeah, so, yeah, so, you know, I had to cut drinking myself because I had to show, you know, good integrity, you know, but I can do it. be the bigger man, so that's why I come to your house, Billy, every year, because you're about the only kid I fucking like in this whole world. <laughs> you're, he's, he's like the last. He's, he's the last one on the stop, and it's like about like if he if he goes slow, he could like have the reindeer go on autopilot, and he can just it takes him about like maybe from there like maybe twelve hours to get home, and he gives him time to sober up on the way there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, I'm taking, I'm taking your, I'm taking all your bread too. Just takes all the bread to eat on the oh. way. Just to sober it up, soak it in. <laughs> he's just like, he's just throwing up over the side. Oh, the fuck! Side. He's just like venting all his problems to this kid. Like, the kid's like, it's like three in the morning. Kid's like, 
He's all saying to him, like, he eventually just gets angry at the kid. He just looks at him and he's like, you're all the fucking same, you know that? <laughs> it's always like, what can I get from Santa? What can I get from Santa? Like, but I, I only, I didn't really ask for a whole lot this year. Like, you don't fucking cut me off. I'm fucking talking. This is what it is. It's not, what can you get from Santa? But what can you get from your fucking self? He just starts poking him. Like, oh, Santa, that hurts. Just because you're wearing gloves that they're not soft. Listen to me, Billy. My name's Sammy. You're all the fucking same, man. You whined in names. <laughs> He gets up and he'll, he's all like saying like, I am my favorite like supervising manager, Steven. Been there for fucking 90 years he's been working for me. Head elf. Head elf of the, uh, head elf of our electronics department. Lost his fucking leg the other day. You know what? You, you kids, you want your Xbox Ones. You want your... PlayStation 4s, your, your Atari Jaguars, you want all this shit. <laughs> you, you don't, you think it just comes from somewhere? We have to export those fucking parts. That's more expensive. I couldn't fucking, I had to lay Steven off. These kids can't even look at him the same way. And I had to do that because you wanted a PS4. But I just wanted work boots for the... My dad makes me work at the coal mines. I'm fucking talking, Sammy. Don't you fucking talk back. Steven, do you think there's another job out there in the North Pole for him? There isn't. There's one business. This is like Flint fucking Michigan. We, we All we make is cars. And once the cars go away, there's nothing. <laughs> We make toys, goddammit! Not Microsoft, not Sony. We make them. <laughs> the parents come in, like Billy. What are you doing up? Like Santa's suddenly not there. Like Santa's yelling at me. She's like Billy. Every year you tell me this goddamn story. That he, Santa... only he can see Santa. Like Santa can go invisible to adults. One of those, you know. <laughs> Billy. Every year at Christmas at three a.m., I catch you drinking a twelve pack of my beer and smoking my Cuban cigars. <laughs> so that's it, Billy. It's not going to be a very Merry Christmas. He starts thinking the bell off. like, no! Starts beating him right there. Santa's <laughs> just sitting, sitting there, there watching. Drinking a couple beers. <laughs> cracks a new one open. Like, rubs his leg a little. Yeah. <laughs> you get him. You get him, Steven. <laughs> That's for Steven. That's for Steven. <laughs> they didn't even leave the kid his toy. <laughs> or his, like, boot, or his work boots or anything. <laughs> he forgets. He just takes off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He walks out, he just like looks over his shoulder. You're a real fucking bastard. You know that, Billy? He just walks away. <laughs> Why did you get a real job? <laughs> Shit, I've been working since I was fucking eight. I worked the front lines back in the day. Santa went to Nam once. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> I gotta relieve all this anger and all this tension. Plus, Mrs. Claus wasn't there to tell me to stop taking drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and they had a lot of them there in Cambodia. <laughs> oh, I always, I can't help but get nostalgic whenever I think of House of Seasons by the Zombies. <laughs> Dropped a lot of E to that song, man. <laughs> Still do every time I hit up Vietnam on my trip. I just see, like, Mrs. Claus, like, is here. It, like, there's that one song that goes, Is anybody out there? And then I know you wonder. Yeah, yeah, and like, you just, like, just hear that muffled in the room, like, Santa Claus is just kind of like bobbing his head, like, taking apart an AK 47 <laughs> with a fucking blindfold, putting it back together. <laughs> back together, doing it over and over. Yeah, just like, Is there anybody out there? You know, just like, like, lost, like, what are you doing? Like, oh, I was just reliving, like, some good times. Like, what are you talking about? I was watching Platoon, that's all. So you, know, doing, you, know. you know, having those flashbacks. Yeah. Good ones. Yeah. Santa Claus doesn't have bad flashbacks. <laughs> just a good time. He just misses Nom. It's not like... <laughs> it's just like the one time you got to get away for a while from the You got to relieve all else. this tension. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, Billy, there's one more thing here. Those elves, you know, putting up with elves all day long. Steven was the good one. <laughs> Steven, Steven being the only good elf of the money, the only one I could really relate to. You know, elves, they're, they're different. They're, they're not like you or me, you know. They're, they're like from some other world. I mean, literally from they're some other world. They're second-class citizens. You know, uh, me and Jesus had to take a space trip <laughs> out to a distant planet to capture and enslave these elves. It wasn't easy. 
<laughs> I know Jesus wasn't really into it at first, but I, I kind of like told him it was it was for a good cause for children, like, and Jesus likes kids, <laughs> so he kind of fell for it. And I didn't think I was be the one to have to fucking manage these little fuckers. This yeah, the, I'm, I was my idea, but I didn't know I was the one to actually do all the fucking work. You know, before I was really Santa Claus, I was just an idea man. That's what I was. I was you know, I, I just hand ideas to Jesus. You know, we we work together. She just came in. It's like, yo, how are people gonna remember me? Years from now, you write I a my book. Birthday. You wrote a book, Jesus. Come on. You, you, but here's the thing. This is the better thing. You don't write it yourself. You get these other guys that follow you to write it because you know Jesus doesn't work, right? <laughs> You're like me and you. We're idea guys. We don't work. We just think up things. We just we just lay the we just lay the we lay down the foreground for it. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, you you work for a long time as a carpenter, but you, do you want to do that more? No, 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 man. I don't want to do that. Yeah, exactly. Fucking a, you don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Goddamn right. Hippie lifestyle says we don't need to work. <laughs> I look like Jerry Garcia. I mean. Well, you look like Jesus Christ. I mean, who else looks like that yet? I mean, pe people in the future are going to look like you, though. So here's what's going to happen. <clears throat> There's some bullshit called the uh, winter uh, social or some shit. I don't know. It's a pagan thing. We make your day on top of that. And here's what we do. We tell people they got to sacrifice a thousand trees in your name. Otherwise, you're going to become very vengeful and very angry. <laughs> Well, I don't know, man. Like, I mean, I don't know a carpenter. And we got to we I, just... I, we, we, I, they I, already... They are, no, I'm fucking talking to Jesus. Don't interrupt me. I'm fucking talking to Jesus. <laughs> what you got to do is we got to tell people they got to get a fucking tree in their house, chop it down, kill it, set it up in their house, nail a bunch of shit to it, and it's in your fucking name. Yeah, sure, the pagans already do that, but we'll make yours way cooler. We'll throw a star on top or some bullshit. And then, on top of that, so they give a shit, they got to buy each other shit. It's not really going to you. It's not going to you. You know, you're Jesus. You don't need material goods, whatever. But it's all going to... But they're all buying each other shit, you know? So... But Santa, who's, who's going to work this? You know, that's a, that sounds like a big operation. I don't know. I'm, I'll tell you I what. Mean, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm into love and caring and stuff, but, you know, hard work. That's, that's Somebody's got to do that. We are. We got our... Uh, let's see. Well, we got our 2000, like, uh, AD space rocket right here. We just take up... You know, Satan's always good about bringing stuff from the future <laughs> back for us. <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta love him. I mean, I, I know, I know, I know. A lot of people don't get along with him very well, but Jesus Christ, man, who else goes to the future to bring back stuff from the past? We're all got this uneasy truce with him. I'm the middleman. I talk to. I know you and Satan don't get along, but I'm like the middleman. I can kind of work shit out. You know, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty much. I'm, I'm cruising along. I can hang out with anybody. Sometimes I go hang out with Buddha. Sometimes I hang out with Thor. I mean, like, I just cross paths. I'm, I'm Santa Claus here. So basically, like, you know, I mean, I. And at across from this, we're gonna probably have to do. We'll probably have to go to some nice guy named George and get get him to kill his entire town. That's probably what the cost is gonna be. You know, Satan likes the little things, but he's going to the future and get us a fucking rocket. It, so. It's not like you know, we we think of his death and it being bad, but for Satan, it's he just gets more it's friends. It's Tuesday. It's friends. You know, <laughs> he gets more people to hang out with. To you know, to shoot the shit and play some poker. It's it's not a bad thing, you know. And maybe maybe he'll get someone to ride goats with him. He's always talking about that. I mean, I don't fucking. I don't fucking he, get he's it. really in that whole goat thing, you know. I, I mean, know. look at he chopped his own legs off and put hooves on for some reason. I, I, I don't get it, but you know, kids get tattoos and get piercings too. I, I don't question. It. <laughs> it's like, he's doing his thing as long as he keeps out of my fucking house. I'm fine, you know. Yeah, I, don't, I hate when he comes in. He just got shit all covered on him and everything, and just the whole house was covered in shit. Next thing you know, I mean, he's kind of one of those guys. I said this earlier. He's like one of those guys. Like, you don't want to hang out with him, but he's maybe nice to talk to you when you want to grab your mail and you know, and you head back in. And you still see him, but he's a good. He, he's a good. He, he, he can pull off some. He's a good businessman. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, you know, he, he, he gets shit done. Just be on his good side. That's all I'm saying. You know, yeah, like. Yeah. Because the second that, you know, apocalypse comes and whatnot, and, you know, he decides that him and God are going to have this big feud, he... well, fuck, I'm not too sure which side you want to be on that point. I'm, I'm going for the Thor's house. Fuck you guys. <laughs> As between you guys. Anyway, I was off the track. Well, believe right. me, a guy with a hammer is who you want to be next to. What was I saying? Right. Slaves. Slaves. So... <laughs> well, you know, slaves is a bad term, Mom. What's a better term than that, G.S.? Oh, elves. 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 Damn right. People love elves. They love the shit out of elves. So go go, go, go into space and slave some elves or hire, air quotes, hire some elves. Bring them back. Low wages, you know. It, it'll be real easy, Jesus. We'll be... And they hand out some shit in your, they hand out some free shit in your name. People are going to love that. Yeah, come on. It's a win-win. Yeah. It happens. Like Jesus is like, all right, Santa, you have a good time running this. Like, wait, wait, what? You got to run this in the, in the North Pole. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I got to. Work with these guys? Uh, little people freak. Jesus, Jesus. Look, look, look at them. They're, they're 
freaks, Jesus. They're not like you and me, man. I mean, come on, come on, come on, man. Like, he looks like, at him like I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not like racist at all, but these clearly aren't people. <laughs> he looks at him. He looks at him. In what fucking world are these things like? They're not, they're not human. They're not even ape. He just he leans in. He says like, maybe it's a bad time to say this, but. Uh, I got this phobia of little people. I, I could only, I could only, I could go and get them if I was going to be out of here real quick. I just, they freak me out, man. I can't be in the same room with them. This is, I really, like, I'm the G, like, look, I got to go do my Jesus stuff. I got to go, like, stop the apocalypse from happening. I got to go iron things out with my dad. I got to go find myself. It's like, you're leaving me here? He's like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Santa, but it was your idea. It's a great idea. So I'll see you in December. I was born really somewhere in April, but let's go in December. It's, December. December. It's, it's a good time. People it's a good like. time. Like, yeah, yeah, but I'm just every here, every fucking day, it's December here. What do I got? Shit, you know? So I didn't fucking think this out. And he's just like looking at all these elves like, yeah, fuck. And he just sees one, looks down like, you're Steven. You'll be the one I like. <laughs> you're okay. You have a mustache. You're you're the only okay one, all right? I don't trust the rest of these fucks, Steven. <laughs> that, that, that's sort of the story of how Santa came to be. <laughs> and how we get to, uh, you know, having our presents. And, you know, even why December, or even why Christmas happens in December, because it's the saddest time of the month. And Jesus is like, you know, my birthday wasn't then, but, you know, Probably. people are so sad when it's cold out, and they got nothing better to do, so, you know. Free shit. Yeah, free shit. Well, sort of free. Expensive, <laughs> but free. We're told free shit for the longest time. Yeah, it, it used to be a nice time when people got together and stuff. Santa's kind of gotten a little overboard. It's probably due to his, mm -hmm. you know, drug overdoses and so <laughs> on. <laughs> and even though he talks about how much he, he, he and Satan hate this capitalist stuff, you know, he's really almost sort of the cause of it. He's <laughs> like, so not really planned. He's like, I... I... <laughs> He's like I've sewn my. Uh, he's like I've sewn myself into like a position I really don't want to be in. I really thought it was something. I really thought I, I found a cheap way out just to make some money and bounce on out and be good. I, I thought I was really. I thought I was like pulling a fucking um, like a Steve Jobs thing here, you know. But then next thing you know, I I, I signed a fifteen year contract with Walmart. <laughs> Walmart. <laughs> Pottersville is Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Satan will le never let me down on that. But Satan was always telling us about Pottersville and how it's the worst place in the world. But you he know, actually changed his name to Walton. <laughs> yeah, but you know, he's, he's Satan. You know, no, nobody listens to Satan. Yeah, they don't. They don't take him seriously because he's trying to get people to ride goats and like wear goat feet. It's either that, or they, or they or they take him out of context and they start doing weird stuff. You know, or they like sacrificing things and whatnot. Satan's just all about you know, the goat riding and you know. You eat the goat afterwards, and then you kind of drain the Maybe you kill a child, but, you know, beyond that. Yeah, yeah, everyone, it's, it's just because Satan wants a kid to hang out with for a little bit. He gets bored down there, you know. He's got video games, but sometimes not enough kids to play him with. Yeah. <laughs> Why does he want to play video games with kids? I don't know, he likes kids. He's, just kind, of, he's kind of like Michael Jackson, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he never had a childhood. <laughs> yeah, God can't, when God cast him out there, so he just kind of grew up all by himself and alone and shit. And he's like, well, we got, no. Well, all he had was a corner and some flames and, you know. Some... Santa Claus tried to actually counter the Santa Claus market. He tried to come with Krampus. That's true. There was Krampus there. There was Krampus to hang out with, but Krampus just kind of just... Krampus was supposed to be my patsy. He was supposed to take over and watch these elves. Too bad that, that all went kind of sour and self real quick. He would just kind of like, you know... He try. He almost kind of like his fascination from goats went to the elves, and just like try to start riding the elves to fucking eat them and kill them instead. Yeah, he was eating the elves, and I mean, I was like, you know, and, 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 he's like, man, you're elves are kind of expensive here. I don't know, you know, that's a long way across the galaxy to get some more. <laughs> it's not like taking a boat from like America to Africa and back. It's, it's a pretty big distance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to go to that. You seen that movie Willow? I had to go to that planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there was a lot of them there. I had. You have no idea how how hot long I had to fight Man Mort again to get all these fucking elves. I, I, yeah, and I found this guy named Val Kilmore there too. Great actor too. I'm glad I brought him back to America. <laughs> like, you'll thank me one day. <laughs> You know, another stop I had to make along the way, but it, it was kind of a lost cause. I stopped at this place called Ireland. <laughs> Found myself this guy, you know, he's king of the lucky charms or whatever the fuck that is. A bunch of serial killing children thing. But the, turns out, you know, there's, those leprechauns are they're horrible employees. They, they just they just pocket gold all the time. They drink. They, they, they fight. <laughs> they, and all they do is eat potatoes all day long. They drink, fucking fight, eat potatoes all at the same time. Uh, horrible, horrible. You know, elves is what you want. <laughs> Not leprechauns. Not hobbits. 
<laughs> oh, and hobbits, are, they're, they're, the, they're like the worst. They're lazy, slow. All they do is sit around and smoke and put shit inside their little cubby holes. And for as dirty as they are, they're so fucking prissy. Ugh. They, they, they gotta have days off. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they're only willing to work an eight hour day and, oh my god <laughs> hobbits are the worst and then you tell them to go on a business trip and they just all they get scared <laughs> <laughs> you're going on a business trip they get really fucking scared you're like okay okay I, I know it sounds horrible but there's this dragon you see and he's kind of he's hoarding a lot of a lot, lot of gold Potter Guild goals yeah and that goal you know okay come on, come on you know we, we all know m money's how you build toys right <laughs> That's what it comes from. You melt down the money, and then it turns to a toy, and then you sell the toy, so you get your money back. I like how, like, Santa Claus slowly starts to talk like Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, you know what I'm saying? Man? <laughs> <laughs> As I was saying, there's this dragon. He's, he's, he's all on all the goals, you know. Dragons, are, they're funny. They're, they're, they're kind of like a Republican, but a Republican that takes money and just, like, sleeps, sleeps in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Maybe he's, Republicans he's, he's red. Thing. I mean, too, to top it all off. You know, you, you ever wonder where like Republicans get that color red from? It's, it's from fucking smog, yeah. right? He, he's a hoarder here. He's got a bunch of money. He takes from everybody. Fucking taxes everybody like he's fucking like King of Sherwood Forest. <laughs> Only instead of giving you more taxes, he burns you alive in front of your wife and child. You know, <laughs> and then next, if he gets bored, <laughs> and then go takes a takes a big long nap <laughs> <laughs> and dreams about it over and over again, smiling. So, uh, yeah, hobbits, fuck them. <laughs> Santa Claus. <laughs> I sell on elves, but not, not those Lord of the Rings elves, too, either. You know, they're too pretty. I kind of look in the mirror the whole time. I was just like, oh, this is not going to work out. <laughs> I mean, they live a long time, and, you know, they are like, they're nice to look at, but. You know, and every once in a while, when Mrs. Claus goes on vacation, you know, you know, hey, little hanky panky with those. I mean, I can't really tell which one's a male or a female, but that's okay. <laughs> Once you turn the lights off, fucking, it's all good. I, I was fucking one the whole time. <laughs> like, oh, what the fuck is that? Like, oh. And then I noticed he was in this Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, man, I got the wrong one there. I, th I thought his name was Guinevere. <laughs> Fucking that wasn't it. <laughs> but, uh, you know. It's well, legless. Well, it's legless or whatever the fuck. Well, yeah, leg legless. I, you know, legless. I thought that meant he didn't have a penis or something, so it must be a woman's name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, behold, you know. He was Either way, it was pretty. I mean, you know, maybe I'm pretty. Pretty. Yeah, prettier than Mrs. Claus. <laughs> All pink in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I settled on, you know, small elves. From a planet, God knows where. I don't even remember the name. It's not, it's not important. Is it, their, is their people it? aren't important. When I went there, I made sure I took their idol and I threw it in fucking molten lava and told them, no, you get back here because Jesus Christ wants you to work for him. <laughs> get in my rocket. Jesus was kind of standing up there. He, he didn't really want to come out. He was kind of ashamed. So there's the things done in my name. <laughs> you know, it, it's like the same time that like Richard the Lionheart told Jesus to come down with him on this crusade. You know, Jesus thought he he told them they're going for it. You know, they're gonna go hang out with some Muslims, learn some cultural things. He didn't realize that they were going down to Jerusalem just to kind of murder, slaughter, rape, pillage the whole place. You know, kinda, Jesus kinda, took his like, dude, the fuck? <laughs> you know, it's just like you said you want me to educate them. Like, you fucking talk to them. Educate them. Books educational. The sword's a sword. <laughs> Not the same. Hey, hey like, like, he's like, hey, Frank, Frank. Are you gonna touch my? Are you gonna touch my bread again? My bat, my bread basket. You see, Frank missing an arm. No. See. Hey, he he got smarter. Smarter he is. Yeah. And it's a sword. You know. Say, so, yeah, sit down. Jesus, I gotta tell you something. You know. I mean, I, me and you're good friends. You know. And I, I've probably been a little bit of a bully this whole time, you know. Santa Claus. Not, not in a mean way, you know, but, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. You're a little easy to peer pressure into doing things you don't want to do. <laughs> I mean, like, like, you know, those crusades, you, you could. The monster stop. just came out of my fucking nose. It probably burned like a daily. It burned like a motherfucker, dude. <laughs> oh, where's the fucking napkin? Uh, right behind the fucking, uh. <laughs> Pressure. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> just sit him down on the bed. Okay, you know those crusades. I, I know you were all for them at first because you know they 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 won you over with the education thing, and I know Jesus, you're on the education and whatnot. Well, make it smart. <laughs> but uh, let, 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 let you know, anybody who says the word crusade is just an asshole. <laughs> who? All they want to do is rape and pillage. That's what they got on the brain the whole time. I mean, yeah, yeah, I know. I think they, it's kind of why I've done that too. You know, that's what it's. You know, yeah, I know. You, that's how I got my work. That's how I got my slit, my workforce. You know, 
We don't, we don't call them slaves. That, that's a dirty word. You know, um, uh, force. We call them laborers. Uh, <laughs> forced labored. Yeah, you know, so, something small like that, you know. No, no, nothing too much, you know. We like to put a nice twist on it. Like, uh, we make them sing songs and clap to it. Kind of like those, you know, when you see Walmart in, like, Japan and China. And they get all happy about it. North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> but geez, I, I, I just gotta let you in. You know, just, that, that peer pressure thing. I mean, if somebody tells you they're doing something holy, they probably are. They're probably doing something maybe glory holy, but not holy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Elbows them like just Jesus. Just looks like what, what's a glory hole? Ah, Jesus, you're always a good kidder. <laughs> I gotta take you there some one of these days. <laughs> Me and Satan hang out there lots of times too. Weird things he always orders a goat. I, I can't figure that out. Always. <laughs> He's, got he's, right. he's so obsessed with goddamn goats. You got you got to go down. You got to take him out somewhere. You know, show him the town. Jesus, he's stuck in hell all the time. You know, he's just got <laughs> kids and goats down there. He's going down there. He's just saying like, I don't know what it is. When you go to the glory hole, for some reason, you know, usually just kind of like. Let's just be quiet. It's kind of weird. It's kind of freaky. But that's what's kind of hot about it. You know, you don't know what's going on, on the other side. But for whatever reason. What's going on on the other side? What goes on the other side? Don't worry, we'll get to that. He's like, he's oh, trying no, to, no, no, but he's trying to talk. To, he's trying to talk to the other guy about goats the whole time while he's getting fucking blown. It's 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 fucking weird. People blow you on the other side, like they. What, what do they blow there? Jesus, it's okay. oh, oh, you Sunday school kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take you. Well, one of these days, we're going to a Nickelback concert, man. <laughs> You're gonna get a lot of pussy there. <laughs> oh, they they give out cats there. Oh, Jesus you Christ. look just like. <laughs> Yes? Fuck, Jesus! It's, it's expression, you know? What? Your name is an ex expletive! <laughs> like fuck, or cunt, or butthole. I'm just... But I'm, I'm a savior. Why would they do that? Oh, gee, all right. It's funny. No, go, no, go, we'll, get, we'll go... We'll get you to a Nickelback concert. People think you're Chad Kroger. It's totally fine. <laughs> you know, yeah, fuck. You, maybe you can get up on stage and sing with him. I, you know, you got a good voice and all, Jesus. I always <laughs> told you that. You remember that? Yeah. Hell, everybody told you that. Remember, we, we were like, maybe we should stop this kind of pilgrimage and just become like a fucking rock band or something, you know? That's what the kids are into anyways. Hell, even Muslims like rock bands. That might have won them all over. I know, we don't, we, we, we don't have to go with my original name, Santa and the Jesus. <laughs> we're gonna go with the, we can put your name first, you know, you might sell a little better this yeah, day and age. You know, Santa's little, you know, I know, I got that capitalism thing kind of going now. I, I didn't really mean for that to happen, but it's going to work out that way. You know, it's not my fault. It's fucking Sears and Walmart and all those fuckers down there. They're, they're pushing me. Stop, Target. Yeah, you know, look at that. Like, you know, there's only one of me, but for fuck's sake, you go, you go to any mall around the country and there's another one of me down there. A fake, an imposter, but, you know, fuck it, you know. Whatever, he's doing the Lord's work, I guess. Yeah, so someone's work. I don't know who's work. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't really into work. You know, I'm, I'm an idea guy. You know that, right? Jesus, same for you. You're, you're an idea guy, you know. You got any beer? <laughs> got thirsty. One for the road before I get back home. Hell, I'll take a wine cooler. I don't really care. <laughs> I just need something to get fucked up. Because, you know, Mrs. Claus, she's out for another 24 hours, so I'm not going to work too much now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, she is a crusty old cunt, I tell you. Yeah, she, she, she doesn't let me go hang out with Thor anymore. She just says, all you guys do is drink, eat, and fuck. And sometimes you fuck each other. <laughs> I said she got mad at me for saying this. I said, is it gay if he's prettier than you? <laughs> Next yeah, thing you she know. She took that offensively, but come on. I mean, like, look, 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 look at that guy. Look, look at that guy. Look at him. He's got he's a pretty. Look at, he's pretty. He's, he's <laughs> almost prettier than Legolas. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at me that way? Oh, I don't give you that homosexuality is a sin bullshit, man. It's all pink in the dark. Come on. Jesus, come on. I mean, I, you fucked a hooker once. I, I caught you, dude. I, I told you. <laughs> Like, I was just being, just being nice. Just she needed some money, and she offered oh, a yeah. service. And then and next she... thing you know, I was, I was in the tent, and one thing led to another, and I didn't want to go. I had to live that down ever since. The fucking Martin Scorsese put it in a movie and everything. <laughs> oh, Martin's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I always get a question about that Robert De Niro part. It's like, is that guy supposed to be retarded? <laughs> What's wrong with that guy? <laughs> well, who the hell? I, like, I, I mean, like, I. I would go to a nudie bar and take Mrs. Claus there, but fuck it, we, we've been together for hundreds of years, so she doesn't give a flying fuck anymore. As long as she gets to go out in the town and get some popcorn, but who the hell takes somebody to a first date and goes to one of those nudie pictures, you know? I mean, it'd be fine if mean, she goes back to you, marry that girl. Oh, marry her, that girl. She's my you one. Found the one. <laughs> Damn right. There was no point in even looking past that. <laughs> but let's be honest, it probably ain't gonna happen again, though, so. Yeah, you, you know, whatever. 
it kind of ends there, you know, but he's, you know, he's like a superhero pretty much. Later he gets a gun and shoots some people, so it's okay. It's like, all right, this guy's all right. Yeah, you know, they're, they're evildoers, you know. He gets to go hang out with, like, teenage Jodie Foster and shoot Harvey Cattail. Harvey Cattail don't cry like a bitch in that one, though. <laughs> yeah, not that, you Usually, know. you know, he has that weird, like, siren. Wee! Got to scream. I don't know where the fuck that comes from. But even if he gets shot, he takes it like a fucking man. He goes down. Yeah, you know, he, he, there's no, like, you know, he's not whipping his dick out or whatnot anymore in that movie. God, I mean, I've probably seen Harvey Cattail's dick more than my own. So. Yeah. I mean, literally, I can't see past my gut, so. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Thor tells me it's nice and big. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus, what I'm really getting at to is just don't be a goddamn pushover. <laughs> it's just, you know, Buddha pushes you over. Hell, Buddha, Shiva pushes you people. over. She, I mean, she's easy for her because she has like 12 arms. She can literally. <laughs> she, she physically pushes you, or he really technically. It's, it's weird. It's weird. I don't, we, we don't question it. Is. Like, you know. It gives a great hand job, though. <laughs> yeah. 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 Holy crap. You know, you thought a Bukaki was fun. Wait till you get all your friends over to meet Shiva. <laughs> Oh, man. Jesus, <laughs> fuck, I know what we're doing for your next birthday. Fucking, you bring Peter over. Hell, you can get Noah out of the fucking, like, hell hole he's in right now. <laughs> we'll get them all together. It'll be a big old party. Shit, invite Judas. I mean, that shit's gotta, you gotta be over that shit by now, right? Yeah, hell, we'll get Mel Brooks, still. Well, <laughs> He'll I don't be know. totally into it. I don't know about bringing Judas. I just, it's still awkward with us. Jesus, quit being a pushover and fucking invite Judas. <laughs> Uh, I, I know Judas used to yell at you all the time, but hell, hell, look, he's the one that got you off that cross. Aren't you the one? Aren't you one like all like try to be forgiving and shit? Like, well, I, I guess I'm goddamn right. That's why you're gonna invite Judas. Quit being a fucking pushover. Jesus, I'm Santa Claus. I was fucking there at the Last Supper when Judas told you, or when you told Judas to, to pretty much be a Ponzi in your scheme. You told him you're like, you know what, Judas, turn me in. I was there, Jesus. You don't fucking lie to Santa. One thing about Santa, you don't forget. I've been, I've been around for fucking 10,000 billion years. Fuck, like I don't remember anymore, but, you know, longer than you. Been your best friend for, you know, God appointed me to be your best friend. You know, at first I was just that fat, chubby kid that, you know. You know, yeah, every, every, every kid but he has that. You, you've seen Jingle all the way, right? There's fat kid in that, right? And you get I could have played him. And you, know, you get, get kind of like, you build it up, you build it up, and one day you're ready to explode. It's like that... It's like that smashing bumpkin song. Despite all my rage, I'm still just a redneck. Sing the song with me, Jesus. Come on. Sing it. Sing Despite the fucking song. Despite all my rage. It's just, Despite all my... You, you know the lyrics, man. Come on. Just a, just, just a rat in a cage? Yeah! There you right, go, Jesus. There you, go. you got down. It's the Billy Corgan, you know. He's Billy. Never forget the Billy. He's doing the Lord's work down there. Santa, how, how many people are doing the Lord's work? You know? <laughs> just, you because, can, just because you like a song... It doesn't mean they're doing the Lord's work. Jesus. That cocaine is doing the Lord's work. Music is the Lord's work, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, have you ever been to a KISS concert before? Like, that's the only thing that brings these poor people out of their blue-collar shit-fucking jobs, like, any kind of remorse in life. I mean, if it wasn't for KISS, I think they'd be all dead. KISS is quite possibly the beacon that holds up Western civilization. <laughs> Holy crap, when KISS is gone... Life might be gone too. I don't know. That might be the end of the apocalypse. We don't know. I mean, we have to get. We gotta. Holy shit! We gotta start building up like an army of ki kiss army. A kiss of army. Kiss, <laughs> a kiss cover bands, so they're always here in spirit. So even when they're gone, their spirit lives on. You understand, right, Jesus? This should must be like. Santa, what the fuck is wrong with you? You can't stay on a single thought for more than like two minutes. You jump from topic to topic. You can't even hold on to a... S Do you remember what you were talking about like five minutes ago? Like I, I was hungry or something about Robert De Niro. I don't fucking remember. Anyway. We, yeah, gotta, we gotta build up a KISS army. That's what we gotta do now. Yeah. To do, to do the Lord's work. <laughs> God damn it. Jesus. Jesus. Don't talk about your dad like that. <laughs> What your dad do? <laughs> yeah, God, he's like the nicest fucking guy I know. Yeah. You know, just, if there's always somebody that I can go borrow money from, <laughs> it's your dad. <laughs> Hell, me and your dad, I don't know how many times we've gotten this Lincoln and fucking cruised around, you know, the fucking earth, you know, fucking like Green Lantern and Green Arrow, <laughs> traveling heroes, exploring <laughs> the world, finding out what it's like to be an average Joe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Satan, he... He rode along with us. He was riding a goat the whole time, just riding with us for some 
fucking reason, because, you know, he's got to ride his fucking goat, you know. You know, I mean, I, I know God kind of cast out Satan early on, but... They didn't come along for this trip. You know? they're, they're still good friends, you know. I mean, I, I catch them Skyping all the time and everything. <laughs> Cloud Skyping. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those ones. They just realize that if they're together, that's when shit gets really bad. Just once in a while. You know what? You know, you want to know the dinosaurs died? <laughs> what, what was it? That meteorite, uh... That was a huge party that fucking <laughs> God and Satan threw, and it got a little fucking out of hand. So much so that they got this giant lasso out into space, and fucking God and Satan were out there, and he was spinning it around. I mean, they were probably about a thousand beers in by this point, because <laughs> you know, they got a high tolerance. Have you ever done it? Have you ever done like heaven cocaine? Heaven cocaine is fucking It is the amazing. purest that you have ever tried. Well, they were out there, and they were swinging around this lasso, and they grab onto this meteorite, and they're, they're fucking hammered as shit. <laughs> and they spun it, and next thing you know, that meteorite came down towards Earth. And you know what? You know what your dad said to like Satan right before he right before he brought it down. Check this shit out. He whipped that motherfucker down, and boom, the whole dinosaur. An entire whole <laughs> everybody died. The rapture is just gonna be a not gonna be a war. It's gonna just be a big old party with Satan and God, just having a good time. Whatever happens, happens. But you see, this is the part. This was this was God's like awakening moment. <laughs> he felt something that day. He was he sat down. And he was like, Satan, we gotta stop this motley crewing around the earth now. <laughs> I, I gotta get sober. You gotta go, man. I, I gotta cast you down. You're a bad influence on me. We just killed an entire <laughs> earth's worth of species that I created in my image. <laughs> Well, not really. I just always wish God's I was like a giant, like dinosaur in a toga. <laughs> I, I just wish I looked like a T Rex. I mean, look at look look how fucking cool that is. I mean, that's what God was telling him. And he was like, you know what? The only way we're gonna sober up is if we split up. You go down below. You go downstairs. I go. I get the upper bunk. You get the lower bunk. <laughs> we just don't visit. You know, we, we'll call each other on holidays and stuff. But cloud Skype. Yeah, we'll cloud Skype it. But it's it's just not worth it, man. Like that. You know, you thought it was bad when Vin Diesel... Or not Vin Diesel. <laughs> Diesel. You know it's when Paul Walker died? Yeah, you thought it was bad when... Uh, <laughs> when Paul Walker died? Oh, it was so much sadder when like, we just couldn't even hang out in the No, boat. no, you thought it was bad when <laughs> Vince Neil killed um, his buddy in the car because they were out driving and they were just too drunk and they took that corner a little too hard and, you know, drink driving and ended up killing that poor guy. You know, the drummer guy, his buddy. You know, that was bad, but... uh. What happened when we got together, we, we killed an entire planet's worth of creation. I mean, hell, if something's down there living, it might be a shark. That's about the only thing, because, you know, I've seen that Jaws movie. They survived through. It might thing. crawl out of the fucking ocean and get legs your fucking nose. But... No, no, and then fuck a chimp or something. I got God fucking... <laughs> now it's just up to... I, I've left that in free spirit down there, so... You gotta go, man. I'm, I'm sorry. And that, that is... Okay, Jesus, that's a story that your dad told me once, you know, and that's why Satan lives below, and, you know, ever since then, you know... God and Zeus and all those guys, they they, they they try to keep it real up there. No, keep, oh, keep, keep the drinking down to a minimum. Oh, fuck, I just realized something. Jesus left like five minutes ago. I've just been talking to myself. <laughs> oh, God damn it, is that a fucking leprechaun there? <laughs> oh, I'm going to kill that fucking thing. <laughs> and that's the Christmas story. That's how, that's how Santa Claus came to be. That's how Santa came to be. That's how Satan got casted from heaven. And that's how the dinosaur all died. Oh. See, pe people never told you that in school now, did they? No, they did not. Oh, goddamn. <laughs> Dude, I kind of want to see this, uh, Satan, or not Satan, this Santa this come This Santa Claus epic <laughs> this just drugged Sa out. Santa Claus just the story rambling. Of, the true story of Santa. <laughs> Just fucking rambling, They're like like sitting on Jesus on his bed, just telling him like, "Here's what, here's what you and your dick." <laughs> just here, just he said, "Peer pressure, Jesus." That's why all this bad shit keeps happening in your name, because <laughs> people keep peer pressuring you. They invite you down there, you know. They tell you they're doing something good, you know. It's kind of like the Inquisition, you know. They they said it was gonna be good, you know. They kind of wrote out. A Fake document, you know, kind of saying, oh, we're just going to, like, you know, pet these guys on the Cold knee. Kind of like, you know, let these you guys, we're, we're going to give them, like, the nicest house and everything, you know. But then you, you didn't know they were going to, you know, tie a horse to each one of their limbs and just let the horse go. I mean. How are you used to know? How are you used to know that? I mean, Jesus, you're, you're just, you, you just think the good of everybody. <laughs> you don't realize that there's just a lot of fucked up people out there. <laughs>
But you know, <laughs> speaking of which, we need to go get some more, uh, some more space slaves. I mean, I mean, space elf workers. Elf fuckers. You, you, you I don't know. know. You know, I wish they could breathe. That'd be much easier <laughs> then. But hell, it's. You know, I, I, I tried. I, I really just sat there saying, "You two, fuck. We need to make more of you." They yeah. just kind of stood at me, confused. They got no, they got no genitalia. We just kind of, you be fuck. You know what? How fucked up an elf dick look? Oh, it's even more fucked up. They don't got it. It's just fucking weird. You know, yeah. I put some Barry Manilow in there and everything, and they still didn't do anything. Just, they just kind of looked at me, confused. I was like, mm. you know, and I was like, well, here's some ecstasy. <laughs> and then they looked, they, they ate it, and they ate each other. <laughs> Yeah, that's fucking weird. <laughs> Never seen that happen in a club before. <laughs> oh god. Oh jeez. <laughs> Coked out Sarah. Poor Jesus being pushed over by everybody. <laughs> Just seeing the good of the world that's not there sometimes. Uh Well. That's probably Old Man Orange for you. Yeah, that's an Old Man Orange Christmas for you. It's a little post-Christmas special. You learn the true origins of how Christmas came to be. <laughs> I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Dunningham. We'll see you some other time. Bye. <laughs>listening to the old man orange podcast check out our website at oldmanorange.com for even more podcasts cartoons videos music and more send us an email at oldmanorangepodcast at yahoo.com be sure to subscribe share rate and review us on itunes podomatic or any of the other fine sites we might be located on if you want to help out even more click on the Amazon or GameStop links on our webpage before you make any purchases there. It won't cost you a penny, but it sends us a little something our way. Thanks again, and tune in next week for more Old Man Orange Podcast.